All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over week, wow, 14 of the NFL Survivor Pool. And, oh, my God, Henry Hugs, Greg Williams, that was just so brutal last week. Um, you know, as I, as I pounded into all of you guys, you needed to fade Minnesota and Vegas last week. And depending on what pool you're in, some pools had like 60% of, of one of them in, and um, some had 30 both teams were right on the verge of losing and um, the Raiders were literally one play away from losing. And Greg Williams just had a six person blitz to defend the Hail Mary and the Hail Mary at 0% uh, comes in and costs so much equity for all of us that faded them. Just the worst. Um, the only uh, bright spot was that Seattle lost. So it took those, uh, took the Seattle people out, but boy, that was really, really rough business last week. That cost a lot of equity. Um, and yeah, nonetheless, we did get Seattle out. So, you know, the, some of our pools are down really down to the nitty gritty. Um, there was actually one pool, which I had five people left in, which I lost because I got a little cutesy. I'll talk about that some other time, but some of my big pools are doing really, really well. And hopefully you guys are in some. I appreciate all the, the comments and the, and the tweets at me. I, I see a lot of you are like deep in some stuff and hopefully, uh, hopefully the, you know, hopefully this has helped from what I've heard. It has helped. So uh, let's do it. Let's, let's finish this up. So again, we're in week 14 and, and most pools are different. Um, some are in doubles, some are in singles. Your mileage may vary with all those disclaimers. Let's talk about what's important. Again, we want to find teams with good uh, implied uh, EV, which is a combination of good winning percentage chances and also uh, you know, low popularity because the, you know, you have two teams of equal winning chances. The team with that's owned by less people is going to have more leverage on the others. Um, and you want to pick teams that, you know, that fit within an overall plan to get to the end, you know, and we've been talking about that all year. And now when you get into the end game, you have some other considerations where if you know that a certain bunch of people are taking teams and that's, you know, in, in pools that are down to under 10 people, you can certainly do that. Then, you know, these EV calculations are irrelevant, you know, because you have to just make your own. You have to figure out if you're going to be in a pool with 10 people and eight of them are going to take one team then you got to fade that, you know? So uh, to wit, let's talk about this right now. So as we go to week 14, um, we're going to analyze these things by implied EV and the best play. And if you, you know, followed this advice here, you have maybe have a couple of green Bay's left. I know I have a couple left um, is green Bay. They have a clearly the highest EV um, and the only thing is, again, is that they do have some future value. Like if you wanted to save them for week 15, uh, you could try to do that. If you wanted to save them for 16 and 17, you could do that. But I'm telling you, when you get down to near the end, um, you got to just, you know, hope that you've set up your paths decently and just kind of drop your bomb, so to speak. So I do have a couple of, of Green Bays and I'm just going to drop them because it's a very, very strong play this week. Um, now. I, I'm, I'm burying the lead here a little bit because it's clearly not the most, uh, you know, the team with the highest winning chances. Um, we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, we'll go down KC again. Uh, if you've saved KC, they're, they're certainly available to you. But again, KC, you know, they are going to have a lot of value for you in week 16 and 17 if you get that far. So if you have better options than KC, like if you have Green Bay available, like if it's between Green Bay and KC and you have one pick, I would say you take Green Bay because I think KC, you know, they're lower EV and they have much better future value. Uh, New Orleans, uh, I don't know who's got New Orleans left, but if you do, um, they certainly are in play this week. They have a good, a good EV. Uh, they have a little future value. You can play them in 16. But if you've done what I've, I've suggested, you have – like a really good option available in 16. Like we've avoided Baltimore all year long. So even though Baltimore has been playing, I mean, the Giants have been playing better, 
Buffalo minus seven with no ownership in 16 is going to be an elite play. Um, them and Baltimore, uh, Casey. Houston is going to be the chalk, and you can leverage off of them pretty heavily. Or Cleveland, they could be the chalk. So if you, you have Baltimore and KC, you know, you're going to be in good shape in 16. Um, but anyway, back to here. Um, so the Saints, if you have them available, they're certainly a good play. So again, if you have these guys available, I would rank them as just as here. You know, I would say Green Bay first. Then I think the Saints second, and then KC. Uh, Tampa has good EV if you have them available. Uh, but they, again, they're going to have good value in 17. Uh, so, again, I make them probably below KC as well. Actually, I'd probably make KC and Tampa kind of tied. So Green Bay top choice, then New Orleans, then KC Tampa. Uh, the Rams, so the problem with the Rams is they have good EV, but they are just, just so much the best play in week 15 that – probably going to want to save them for 15 okay, if you have them available. Um, Tennessee. Now, Tennessee, th this is going to be the, 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 the nasty one that's going to screw people, okay? Because there are people that have them available. And as you see here, because of that, they're going to get like 15 to 20% ownership, um, which is why their EV is not that great, even though they have 75% winning chances. So, yeah. Uh, they, uh, you know, and, and as a matter of fact, if you have them available, I would prefer you take something else because let's say that you have, uh, let's say you don't have the Rams available. You're going to need something good in 15. And while if you have Baltimore available, Baltimore is certainly a good play. I'd rather you push them out until 16, if that makes any sense. Um, so uh, moving on. Uh, um, we haven't even gotten to the lock yet, right? Because you won't talk about that. So you have Dallas, which is going to be a really scary play, right? You're going to you have Andy Dalton revenge going into Cincinnati. Now, again, we're recording this before this game even happens on Tuesday. So who knows what could happen tonight? But, um, yeah, if you got them available, I still wouldn't even take them. You know, their EV is just below all these other teams. Um, so I would rank all these teams above that. Now, what you have going for you is they don't have any future value left, but, um, you know, I would rank them below. Two teams that interest – well, one – there are two teams that interest me and one team that, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I, I'm just not going to play them. So let's talk about that first. So Seattle is like a 100-point favorite over the Jets. Okay, they're, they're a 15-point favorite. They are, um, I don't know – what have 85, 90% winning chances, 85% winning chances. And you just saw what the Jets did last week. I mean, they're just pathetic. Seattle's coming off a loss to the Giants. They're not going to lose twice in a row, two games a, a row at home. They're probably a lock, but let, let me explain something to you. Okay. Seattle, it depends what kind of pool you're in. Like if Seattle is only really going to be 60% owned in your pool, then yeah, go for it, all right, uh, if you don't have any of these other teams available. But I'm telling you, in, in some of my pools, I mean, there's one pool I'm in, I promise you that they will be 90% owned, okay? And you just don't get too many opportunities to take that kind of leverage against the team. So um, I am going to attempt to avoid them in, uh, in, in, in those types of pools where I can. Um, However, what I might do in one of my double pick pools is I might do a little both. I might take Seattle and eat the chalk there and then maybe pair it with like a really low owned Green Bay because I do have that available. But you really, you really don't want to play. I know, I know what you're thinking. Come on, they're not losing. It's not as simple as that. Okay. It's not just that they're not losing. It's not, life does not work that way. Life works in terms of probabilities. Yeah, they're going to, they're going to win 85% of the time. OK, that means they're probably what? What does that mean? An eight uh, was it eight to one favorite. No, six to one favorite, maybe a little more than that. But if they're a six to one favorite and they're being owned by 90 percent, they're a bad bet. Right. And I know what you're thinking, yeah, but they're not really good. It happens. I mean, KC was one possession away from losing this week to Denver. And I would have been very, very upset about that because I had some KC. Um, 
So it does happen. And I don't know, man. Uh, you really, you, you, you can save them if you want. If you want to save them, you can play Washington when no one's going to own them. Uh, you know, look, again, they're probably going to win, but I'm just not doing it. Uh, two teams that are interesting, though, are Seattle and, uh, excuse me, Carolina and San Francisco. Uh, you'll see that they rank EV in really, really decently because no one's going to own them. Um, and Carolina is, is also a really, really strong play in that they have no future value at all, you know? So Carolina, if you're like a double pick pools, for example, they, I, I consider them almost like an elite play, you know what I mean? Because, you know, c- considering that you're probably not going to have all these other teams available to say the least, Carolina is definitely in play. I mean, McCaffrey's back and everything I'm saying is basically double counting what we know already is that they're probably a good play because the win odds are already factoring in the different injury news. But I got a feeling that once they announced that McCaffrey's actually in, um, they are going to spike uh, in EV. Um, I don't think that the only problem is, is I wonder if people are going to own them as a result of it. So you got to watch, right? If they fall, you know, below one EV, then, then don't play them. But if they stay here one or above, and you don't have anything else available, I would much rather you take Carolina than Seattle. I mean, honestly. I mean, you know, don't have that many chances to just take a whole pool down in one week. And this is this is a week to do it. Um, San Fran, another kind of decent play. Same idea. Very moderate winning chances. And yeah, Washington's been playing well, but you know, it's all factored into the price already. Very low own, zero future value. So these are both of these are really, really good plays. So sheets, what what are you, what are you telling me? Are there like 10 teams to choose from? Yeah. But the problem is, like I said, is I bet you that very few, I bet you none of you have all 10 available, right? So what you have to do is just kind of prioritize these things. So like for me, and again, it depends what kind of pool you're in, but I would rank Green Bay, like it is right here, number one, then probably the Saints, number two. And then I guess, I guess it's close between Tampa and I don't know. I think I think I, I like the Carolina San Francisco idea better than the Rams because the Rams you could use in fifteen so easily. Um, and KC, I, I really want them in sixteen and seventeen. So um, I, I these are my rankings. As I would say, Green Bay one for sure. Um, uh, New Orleans number two, I think for sure. And then after that. I guess Tampa, Carolina, and Seattle are close. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not interested in playing Dallas. Uh, First of all, I wouldn't recommend it before we see what happens tonight and what happens to the line. I wouldn't play Seattle. Just, I just wouldn't do it. Yes, they're, they're going to win, probably going to win. But again, life doesn't work in terms of absolutes. Uh, If they do lose, uh, you're going to be, and, and, Look, if you have like a Green Bay and Seattle loses, you are in you have such leverage. It's like crazy. In any case, um, that's happened last year. Last year, I won the one of the one of the pools online. I won this pool like, in one week because everybody had Indianapolis. There was one week where we were like a, 13 people left. 12 of them took Indianapolis. Excuse me. Yeah, against Miami. And I had some other team that got lucky. And then I was sitting there rooting at a 12 to 1 shot. You know, basically, and I took the whole pool down in one shot. And you don't get a chance to do that all too often. So uh, that's where we're at for week 14. And uh, that's it. Uh, Good luck, everybody.